Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of NASDAQ Spotlight. I'm your host, Alan Schoenberg, and we are here at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, where we are hosting the Mercedes-Benz Motorsport CEO and CTO Summit. And it is my pleasure to welcome to today's program, Holly Ridings, Chief Flight Director at NASA. Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. So I have uh, an important question to ask you. We'll start off okay. with uh, no pressure, but uh, Game 7 the World Series is tonight. I understand you're a big Astros fan. I am, I am. Are you a little nervous? No, no. They're going to do great. Fully confident. Confident. Total okay. confidence. All right. That, that's probably going to be your toughest question today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, those guys uh, are amazing. All right. So let's talk about... Uh, your, your career, Chief Flight Director at NASA, a pretty big title. Can you talk about some of the things that, as a Chief Flight Director, that you do? All right, so uh, I'm responsible for all of NASA's human spaceflight operations. So we have kind of three big areas, and I know we're going to talk about some of them, but low Earth orbit and the International Space Station. Yep. And then we've got commercial crew vehicles that are being built by our partners, SpaceX and Boeing, and those will fly to the space station. And then we're also, of course, super excited about uh, Artemis and heading outside of low Earth orbit to the moon and then on to Mars. And so all of those programs result in execution of missions, operation of the missions, where you have the astronauts and the space vehicle and you go do what, uh, what the mission is. And so that's what I'm responsible for. So at the CEO Summit, we've been talking a lot about teams. Can you talk a, a little bit about your teams and tell us you know, what they're doing, how, you're, how you focus them, and how you get them you know, kind of moving forward? Ah, so teams, it's, that's a, we can talk about teams for a long time, right? So if you think about, uh, I work at the Johnson Space Center, Houston, Texas, and Mission Control, um, which of course is our iconic Mission Control, and our, our team, our, we call it a flight control team, but it's a team on the ground, right? And so you've got your, your spacecraft, your crew members in space. That team is responsible for the, for the safety of that crew and the vehicle that they're flying in. And so you have your ground team, you have your vehicle, you have your crew members, and they all work together as one integrated team. And you were talking about, you know, the, the Formula One team that uh, that is here, and it, it's similar, uh, very similar, right? You have the the driver in the car, you know, the high performance vehicle, and you have the team that's working to execute that mission, which in their case is the race to the best of their ability. We also then sort of distribute out from that central hub where we have international partners, we have commercial partners, and many of them have their own teams on the ground control teams and we interface and integrate with all of them and everyone plays a role in, in making sure the mission is successful. And, and keeping those teams focused, what, what, uh, where do you go to? Like what's your go to? Do you have a mantra? Do you have, a, <laughs> do you have a, your own way of getting all of those teams organized? Yeah, so NASA of course, uh, lots of tradition, lots of history and so our part of uh, NASA's flight operations and we have foundations of flight operations. And so when we bring people in, you know, we teach them those foundations. It's sort of our core belief system. There are things like you said, teamwork, discipline, competence, um, vigilance. You know, they were talking again at the forum about, about cybersecurity and the vigilance. And so we have all of those things and we train people. Those are our core, core beliefs and we always go back to them to make sure that we're ready to safely fly in space. Okay, and we have a significant milestone coming up on the International Space Station, 20 years. Yes. Uh, thinking back over those 20 years, what have been some of the significant milestones that you've witnessed? Yeah, so I was lucky enough uh, to actually start at NASA before the, what we say the first element launch, the mm -hmm. very first element that launched the space station, and this is 1998. And so I was actually in, in, a, in a, the control center, not as a mm -hmm. flight director, working that mission, you know, as a subject matter expert looking at, at data from, uh, from thermal systems, right? And so that's obviously a significant milestone. Um, we then put crew on board uh, just a year or so after that and then we've had continuous crew on board for, for 20 years. I mean amazing, right? Um, we also went through multiple uh, shuttle missions where we did the assembly, uh, STS-135, the very last shuttle mission. And for me personally, um, I was uh, lucky enough, uh, fortunate enough to be responsible for the very first commercial cargo vehicle, so SpaceX Dragon, that we flew to the space station in 2012. And so again, that was sort of after we were largely done with the assembly, right? So we we completed the shuttle missions, we completed the assembly, the station starts transitioning to a scientific platform, and now here comes the advent of our commercial partnerships. And so that was a big milestone for me. All right, so we'll get into the commercial partnerships in a second, but uh, I guess just thinking back, like learnings from the space station, what what have been some of the key things that, you know, it's, it's out there, it's already in the earth, you know, we don't read about it every day. Uh, right. You do. So what's been a, uh, 
What's been a big takeaway that you've learned uh, that you know, you know we've been able to benefit from from this? Yeah, so you started out talking about teamwork, right? So it is an international partnership where everybody brings their technical capability, but also brings you know their perspective and their priorities and their and their culture. So when you consider the challenge of flying in space, the risk just to do it from a technical mm -hmm. standpoint. But my big takeaway really has been has been the teamwork. Like you can go farther together, and that people that don't necessarily in the beginning look like they might have the most in common really can figure out a way to do amazing things. Yeah, we were talking earlier. You go you can go fast solo, but you can go farther together. Together, absolutely. Uh, okay, so commercial relationships, commercial partnerships. That's kind of been the next big phase with NASA. Walk us through how that's progressing, and what's kind of the next phase we'll see. Okay, so. Uh, it's progressing really well. So we started uh, with cargo vehicles to the space station. This again was way back in this 2012 and, and obviously they got set up. The 2012 was the execution, so they got set up before that. Um, and then we transitioned into crew vehicles. And so uh, that's still in work. This next year we're gonna fly uh, the first crew vehicles uh, to the space station that again are built commercially, right? So the difference between buying a service or you know, buying uh, that actual item and then taking it over and, mm -hmm. and doing it yourself. So now we're kind of transitioning to buying the service. And then really for Artemis, right, the, the moon program, we're gonna put all that together where it's a combination of things that uh, NASA has done in house that we're going to use sort of more con traditional structure where we, where we buy items and then also all of these commercial partnerships where the commercial teams are going to be responsible for you know their their piece of it and and nasa's utilizing that service and so we're going to put it all together it's so be great more teamwork uh, absolutely it's it, a lot it of teamwork together. that's what uh, makes it fun you get to figure out how right. to make it all work together uh, it's all it has to be fun every day right yeah uh, okay so moon artemis uh where where are we and what are we going to be seeing coming out of that uh in terms of uh exploration and, and what what are you most excited about ah so artemis right twin mm -hmm. sister of apollo mm -hmm. first woman on the moon and next man on the moon 2024 so um, I really am most excited, first of all, about the technical challenges. So um, although uh, there are folks who ha accomplished that and went to the moon, it was, it was not my generation. So for us, this is the first time we're going to the moon. And the difference between flying outside of uh, low Earth orbit and, and in low Earth orbit, technically differences, right? I mean, when you're headed to the moon, you're committed. You can't get the crew back as quickly as you can from low Earth orbit. When you decide to come home, you got to make that decision multiple days in advance. You know, so the risk changes from a technical mm -hmm. standpoint in a way that's going to be exciting, exciting to learn. And the other piece of it for me personally, right? You know, people get involved in space because it's cool, but you stay because you care, right? So we all believe in the human endeavor headed outside of the solar system. So to get to the moon, establish a footprint, and be able to jump up from Mars. I mean, really, that's that's what we've all been dreaming about yeah. since we were kids. Right, so. right. These are all, all building blocks, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I talked about when I when I was a kid. My big missions for me were were the Saturn missions. Those were those were amazing. Those are deep space. Yeah, very that's much fun. So, yeah. That's really fun. Uh, okay, so let's focus back on the summit here. Uh, we had yesterday we had some incredible athletes. Oh, yeah. Right. We had Michael Johnson, uh, Olympic gold medalist, Chris Froome, Tour de France winner, uh, and of course Lewis Hamilton from the Mercedes team all talking about high performance. Again, going back to teams and teamwork. They're individuals, but they're on a team. Uh, the pressure they feel, the uh, thrill of winning. What were some of the key takeaways uh, when you heard them talk yesterday? Yeah, so here's, here's one of the things that I noticed about them, right? And, and uh, it's that they were sitting up there still learning from each other, mm -hmm. right? If you right. watched their faces and how they interacted, they're learning from each other. And so, you know, having that opportunity, one, to listen to them, but watch them interact and and always be learning i i've come to the belief that from a leadership standpoint you know being a leader is one thing being a student of leadership is something even more important as you transition you know into a significant leadership role and so watching them kind of be students of each other even though they are respectively you know the best right. of the best in their field and to me it's just a very you know, one, important opportunity to hear them, but two, you know, just sort of a, a good life lesson and a, and a reminder. Yeah, and a constant focus on mind over matter. They talked a lot about the mental aspect of what they do, and, you know, did that translate to 
how are you leading your teams? Yeah, so one of the challenges, right, in complex problem solving, high stress environments, and where we really only do our job if something goes, or at least a portion of our job, when something goes really wrong, right? So you plan the missions, you execute the missions, that's all stressful, but you can have, you know, an unexpected, you know, catastrophic event in racing, just mm -hmm. like you can in space, and then everybody goes right. to work, right? And right. so always being balanced on that, that pinpoint, you know, where you have that threat of that next level of stress out there and how you live with sort of your baseline stress and then how you jump into that next level. And then we talked about how important it is to recover. Mm -hmm. And so the mental aspect of being able to navigate through, through those stages and then, you know, on the other side, handle the fatigue that comes right. with it is is very important and so there was a discussion about is it the the physical performance right. or is it the mental I remember that, right. and uh, you know quite a few people were like it's more you know more mental than the yeah. physical certainly for us doing ground operations the astronauts there's a physical aspect to that right. absolutely getting the rocket you you know right. you you had you had out in space but for us a lot of it is keeping ourselves physically strong but in order to be mentally strong so that we can be there you know when they need us in that moment Okay, so speaking of moments, uh, NASA has been focused a lot on kind of the next generation of mm -hmm. people coming into the program, not just astronauts, but engineers, right. technicians, big focus on STEM. What advice would you give to young people or even the parents of young people uh, who are looking to get into, you know, the business of space? Yeah, so I think that, you know, we were talking a minute ago about, about learning, mm -hmm. right? You've got you've to teach them at an early age to constantly be learning. So, uh, you know, I've, I have a relatively young child, and if you have kids at all, they think they know everything. So, you know, trying to instill in them this, this open mind and this, this interest in learning and, and wanting to figure out how things work, right? Especially when they're at a point where what they really want is to know things and be in charge. So that'd be sort of my my parental advice. Um, I, think if, I think for folks that are a little bit older, you know, you're starting out your careers or even in college, go solve the hard problems mm -hmm. and also the ones that, that no one wants, right? Everyone wants the big flashy problems. Yeah, they're yeah. going to get a lot of credit for it, you know, name and lights, that kind of thing, right? I mean, those are great, but go find the problem no one wants to tackle mm -hmm. and preferably one that's pretty hard and just go go teach yourself how do you approach it what works what doesn't work you know figure out how much grit you've got you know in your system because then when the lights are on and there's so much pressure you've already figured out like what you believe and who you are and how you approach complex problem solving and Tommy Hilfiger yesterday talked about uh, relentless optimism yes and I think that's a day-to-day -day. you talked about grind that's just day-to-day -day. you've got to continue to stay at it yeah, I mean, Space Station, 20 years, right? So yeah. it's amazing, but you also got to think about the people who've been doing that for 20, 20 years. Nights, weekends, holidays, there's someone in mission control taking care of the crew, running the space station, you know, every minute of every day. And trying to keep your people and yourself and the team overall, mm -hmm. you know, you fresh, right? And the optimism plays a huge, huge yeah. part in that. Every single day, this is a hard problem, but we're yeah. going to get it done. I mean, you asked me about the Strohs total confidence. That's how you fly in space, <laughs> right. right? This yeah. is a hard problem. Are we going to solve it? Absolutely. That's yeah, so how you get over the obstacles, right? Yep. Um, pop culture's played a big role in space, in space exploration. I know I grew up with Star Trek. Um, it was a big part of, of my life as a kid and still is as mm -hmm. the episodes have continued. Is there anything that influenced you growing up from a pop culture standpoint, movies, books? <sighs> so pop culture, right? So I, I, when I was young, Space Camp, do you guys remember the movie Space Camp? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's 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 campy because yeah, yeah. space camp right? <laughs> right but then i actually the went point. to space camp so i you know okay. i see this movie and then i actually like you know got a job and earned earned money you know in the summer even when i was pretty young and and then you know paid to go to space camp right. and and it was from my perspective amazing you know it was exactly like the movie you got yeah. to go do all you're like this is what i want to do <laughs> this is exactly what i want to do so definitely from a pop culture standpoint i'd say more recently you know, we we at our house like uh, like The Martian, right? Okay. So so Matt Damon, yep. uh, Andy Weir, who wrote the book, is amazing. And what we like is Matt Damon's relentless optimism, right? Think about it. I'm stranded on Mars. I'm probably never getting home, but I'm going to grow food. I'm going to try to figure out how to, you know, fix my equipment, you know, that relentless optimism really you know, resonates with yeah, us. It's a great book and a great movie, yes, so, and, yes. a, and a very good example. Uh, Holly, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, really enjoyed the conversation, and I hope you're enjoying the event and spending time with a lot of CTOs and CEOs here at NASDAQ, so thank you. Yeah, the event's been amazing, and I've, I've learned a lot, so thanks for having me. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay tuned and follow all of the NASDAQ social media channels for more original programming right here from MarketSite.